DraftKings reported quarterly financial results on November 7th, 2024 that are sending the stock price higher. The company also updated investors on their outlook for fiscal year 2025 and gave investors an outlook on new markets it will enter with its sports gambling and iGaming products. In this video, I'll review the company's latest financial results and those qualitative factors that investors need to know about DraftKings. I'll also update my buy recommendation of DraftKings stock. Remember, coming into these quarterly financial results, I've had DraftKings stock rated as a buy. I've had it rated as a buy all year. So you're going to want to tune in to see if I'm changing that recommendation following these results and the updated fiscal 2025 outlook. Let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so DraftKings reporting that revenue for the quarter that ended September 30th, 2024 increased by 39% to $1.1 billion. The company says their focus remains on driving sustainable revenue growth and profitability in 2025 and beyond. That's the big inflection point DraftKings hit this year is an increase in profitability an increase in cash flow from operations as it finally reached a scale that generates sufficient profitability on the bottom line and the industry competitive pressure has eased in the last couple of years as advertising spending, promotional spending and incentive spending has decreased industry wide. So the midpoint of their 2025 outlook suggests that revenue will increase by 31% year over year and adjusted EBITDA of 950 million for 2025. That's a robust outlook for DraftKings that's growing to significant size. It's already reporting significant increases in cash flow and adjusted profitability and management expects those good times to continue in 2025. Unsurprisingly, the stock price is up following this news. It's up about 3% on the day after these results. If I look more broadly, year to date in 2024, DraftKings stock is up 13%. It's trailing the S&P 500, which is up over 20%. Still, the stock has reported significant increases in all its critical metrics and is heading in the right direction. DraftKings reported monthly unique players of 3.6 million in the third quarter. That was an increase of 55% year over year. If you exclude the impacts of the acquisition of Jackpocket, the monthly unique player increase would have been 27% compared to the same quarter last year. That's solid growth to be sure. The average revenue per user came in at $103, which was a 10% decrease but that was because the users that it acquired from the acquisition, those generated a lower average revenue per user. If you excluded those, the average revenue per user would have increased by 8% year over year. And this is a trend we've seen with DraftKings for several years now is as the players get acclimated with its platform, they spend more money on the platform. They engage with the platform more frequently and they generate more revenue for DraftKings over time. Looking at the 2025 outlook, the range of 6.2 to 6.6 .6 billion would be 33% growth, and the 2025 outlook of 950 million in adjusted EBITDA is the same as the company announced on August 1st. However, the company is decreasing the profitability outlook for 2024, to 260 million at the midpoint, down from 380 million at the midpoint, 120 million decrease. And the reason they're saying that is because the results of sporting events worked against DraftKings. And my first thought came was, I guess the house doesn't always win. This was a quarter where DraftKings didn't win as much as they thought it would. But in the long run, the house always wins because the odds are in its favor and math never loses. Math is on the right side for DraftKings in terms of the outcomes of events. And so there's going to be quarters where 
you know, players get lucky and DraftKings loses, but over the long run, the odds are always in its favor. So one of the bigger tailwinds behind DraftKings growth is entering the new markets. Right now, they're still only in 25 states in the US, which represents about half of the population. So there are growth opportunities ahead to expand to new states. And that's especially true with iGaming. The number I just gave you was for sports betting. For iGaming, they're only in five states, representing 11% of the population. This segment of its business is going to face more headwinds because they have to compete with local casinos that will make it hard for DraftKings to enter those markets. But there isn't, there wasn't sports betting in many states in the U.S. prior to these online sports books. And so they weren't competing with as much embedded interests for sports betting as they are competing with the embedded interests with iGaming. That's why it's more difficult to gain approval. And it's the biggest risk for DraftKings as an investor is that they rely so significantly on regulation and approval from states and jurisdictions to offer their services. That's the biggest risk. Um, thankfully, they've made great progress here and their skills in gaining access to new markets is proving successful. And they're now live with Sportsbook and iGaming in Canada, in Ontario, Canada, which represents about half of the population, 40% of the population there. And on November 5th, Missouri passed a ballot initiative that legalized sports betting. So DraftKings will launch in that market soon. And they're also expected to launch in Puerto Rico pending market access. I highlighted that this success is leading to improvements in cash flow in the most recent quarter. Um, sorry, the most recent nine months that ended September 30th. The company generated 92 million in cash flow from operations. That was up from negative 73 million in the same time last year. So huge improvement there, a big inflection point for the company to turn positive, significantly positive in cash flow from operations. And they no longer need to go to investors to ask for any more money. They're set. And given their forecast for 2025 and beyond, they expect to be uh, set in terms of generating self-sustaining amounts of cash flow and profitability. So the stock price is now trading at a forward price to earnings of 27.63, which is about the average it's traded for all year long here in 2024, despite the company making solid progress forward. So I've had the stock rated as a buy all year long in 2024. I updated that recommendation today and reiterated that I still think DraftKings stock is a buy. It has risks, like I mentioned, but I think the rewards outweigh the risks for this iGaming company. Hey everyone, so many of you have been asking about my investing strategy and I'm excited to announce that I've written a book that's available for sale now that describes my six step invest investing framework for evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.